going live. We're on air. Welcome to the IDD Chit Chat Live. Welcome tonight to our first ever episode of the IDG Chit Chat Live. My name is Shannon Combs Bennett and I am the creative director for the In-Depth Genealogist magazine. Um, with me tonight are my special partners and uh, co-creators and workers and, and all those other types of things. Uh, Jennifer Alford, our um, publisher, and our executive director, Terry O'Connell. Welcome, ladies. Hi, Shannon. Thanks, Hi. Shannon. So, everybody wanted a few years ago after we, in um, what was it, 2013, we did a Hangouts after Who Do You Think You Are Live showed every night when they were on for that season. And it was very, very popular. Uh, so popular, we had comments made to us last year when we didn't do it after that season that how people really wish we would do something again. Well, this is the answer to that. We are starting this new series called Chit Chat Live where we're going to come and talk to you about things, about episodes of genealogy shows, books, really anything that we can think of. Uh, if we can get people to come on board, we're also going to have special guests too. Now, this show was created, um, like I said, to answer that call. And if you have any comments or suggestions or want to talk to us, please make sure to let us know. We'd love to have uh, to hear from you. So on that note, why don't we go ahead and get started? So in this episode of Chit Chat Live, we're going to talk about the season two premiere of Genealogy Roadshow. It premiered this last Tuesday, January 13th on PBS, and it took us to the Cabildo in New Orleans. Have the two of you ever been there before to New Orleans? No, it is definitely on my bucket list. No, I haven't been there either. Oh, <laughs> I've been twice, and I have Aww. to say it's absolutely fantastic, so you should really go. Um, the, the Cabildo is an amazing building, so make sure you go visit it. Cool. <laughs> That's my big tip for you. <laughs> So, there's a new host that has that has joined uh, Josh and Kenyatta this year, uh, Mary Tedesco, uh, who is from. Um, she has a website called Origins Italy, which is originsitaly.com. I think you know that's a really good sign that maybe the show is growing in popularity. And I thought she added some um, some good depth and a nice uh, atmosphere to the show. What did you guys think about that? I thought so too. I thought she was. Um, she seemed very comfortable on the screen and added some interesting information about um, the one story that was about Italy. Uh, so yeah, I'd say she was a, a good addition. It's nice to have a few more genealogists get, you know, get some air time. How about you, I, Terry? I absolutely loved seeing her. She was very fresh-faced and definitely somebody different that we haven't seen on the genealogy shows. And she seemed very comfortable and really enjoyed giving the information to these family members um, as to what was found out for each story that she was involved in. Yeah, I thought she was real comfortable and had a good presentation about her. I was, and she was interesting to listen to, so that's always nice yeah. when somebody's fun. <laughs> yeah. So, let's see here. I have to say, one of the, remember, they added the uh, tip segment this year, and it was the um, Josh wandering around the cemetery in New Orleans. <laughs> and I have to say, I, th that was an interesting segment. Um, I hope they continue to do a lot of tips or little things like that because I think yeah. it adds more flavor and maybe a little um, uh, research and suggestions to the background. Does, what do you guys think about that? I definitely agree. I blogged about a cemetery trip uh, maybe about a year or two ago and about looking at the graves that are close in proximity to your relatives and how I found all these other Jonas family members that quite possibly could be related. And the comments that I got were like, oh my god, I've never thought to do that. So I think it's really a good thing for the media to be showing there are other ways to do you know, your research, whether it's the cemetery or anything else that they might be looking to share a tidbit with. What about you, Jen? Yeah, I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, I thought that it was a great addition as far as um, kind of showing people who are not as, you know, 
obsessed with cemeteries as us genealogists tend to be. Yeah. Um, just some of the things that we typically look for and give them some ideas and I think he also talked about um, how to find out where your people are buried Ta you know talking to um, funeral homes and contacting the you know looking for the death certificates so I thought that was helpful as far as you know there are people who they may not know for sure where their you know great-grandfather's buried or something like that so I was pleased to see them kind of giving some research tips along the way because so much of it's just you know they sit there and and look at the newspaper articles and the census records and don't really understand you know that this is something that they could access anywhere that right they could go and see it in their hometown oh there's a cemetery where all our relatives are buried and learn about them there yeah I have to say I'm a I'm a little weird <laughs> <laughs> but y'all probably knew that. Um, my grandmothers took me to cemeteries as a child. <laughs> and um, uh, my grandmother, my mother's mother, uh, she would lay fresh flowers on my grandfather's grave every week that she lived there, Aww. especially when his favorite flowers were in bloom and she would go to the garden and collect them and Aww. we would go every week when I was home in the summertime. And it's a true I didn't necessarily realize it as much as I do now then but we would visit what is essentially the family cemetery and I'm related to at least half if not more the people that are buried there and mm -hmm. sometimes we would walk through the different rows and she would say and this is you know so and so and this is so and so and over here are this family and over the years you know I would learn to ask more questions but I never realized that people didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> and um, I like to take my kids, uh, my children probably, well, no, I know, they know I have a strange obsession with cemeteries because I'll see an old cemetery as we drive by on the highway and they're like, we can't stop, Mom. <laughs> because it's, it's fascinating to go and see and to wander around and read the headstones, especially the older ones, because they tell you so much information. Yeah. I also want to add that I think it adds um, more of a, a personal connection to the genealogist, like Josh. So we all see Josh, and he's you know connected to these big names, you know, find my past, and he's like this executive, and he's got this high power job. But he's just a genealogist too, so he's out there looking for his people at the cemeteries as well. And I think it um, gives our the audience a view of we're all doing the same thing, no matter where we're at in our research. We're all looking through the cemeteries. We're all looking through these records. Right. Now, that was one of the highlights that we really liked. What about um, things that you were a little, wish they'd have talked more about or didn't quite like? I know for me, because, you know, I'm a, a DNA nut, I, I wish they'd have done a little bit more explanation of that teeny tiny little segment they did on the ethnicity analysis for that woman. What about you guys? I absolutely agree with you on the DNA thing. It kind of just makes it just seemed awkward in there. It didn't seem like it fit because there wasn't mm. enough explanation. But for me, I will say it's the noise in the background. Mm. I think they have it set it up more of a vendor hall setting, and there's people talking in the back. And as I'm trying to watch the genealogist tell these families these great stories that they found out, I keep seeing people talking in the background, and it literally made me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So distracting. Wow. Yeah, I, I agree, Terry. I found it very distracting. And, you know, it's funny. I didn't watch it on my television. I actually watched it through the PBS site on my phone. So even that, with the headphones on, I, you know, I think it amplified all mm -hmm. that background noise. So, you know, even just sitting there watching it that way, I was just like, what the heck? Are they just like... And like you said, in an exhibitor hall, what the heck? Well, so. it kind of, it, uh, the only thing I could think of is that it made it more reminiscent of Antiques Roadshow because at Antiques Roadshow, you have that in the background. That is true. There's, there's the, the different booths and everything behind them and the streaming people, and it's very loud and very noisy. So taking away the, um, the small crowd that they had last year, that were huddled around the TV and making it more like that, maybe it's just their way of, of getting to a more of an antiques roadshow feel. Right. Oh, I can certainly see that. I can definitely see that, but I think the, the crowd around the table, 
gives it more of a, a wow factor uh, as you're finding out and everybody's like, ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> wow, how'd you find it? You know, when we see these right. people talk in the background, I want to know what they're talking about. Right, right. I want to know what great story are they finding, you know? <laughs> Don't we all want to know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we uh, there were a total of I because I'm a geek and I took notes during the episode. <laughs> there are a total of uh, a nine stories shared, and obviously we can't talk about each and every one of them. So Terry, Jen, and I, uh, before we started taping this, sat down and thought we would talk about three of them. Three of the ones that we thought were very interesting or showed a unique perspective on research. Um, so first, why don't we talk about the house history? That was a really neat way that they uh, showed a lineage and ownership, and I don't think a lot of people realize that house or building type histories can really do a lot for your genealogy. Mm -hmm. I think it was definitely unique to what they've done in the past. I've personally not looked into any specific house, but I think it was a very, it was a very fascinating story. Yeah, I really enjoyed how um, you know they ended up tying in um, the pension records to show how she was able to buy the house. Right, I that was awesome, and and the family was so excited about that, and you know that was just like such a highlight for me, seeing their reactions to the fact that you know here she was a widow with all these kids buying her own house. Right. It was pretty fantastic. Pretty yeah. fantastic. Um, as somebody who... What, Terry? And that they still own it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, that more cool. <laughs> <laughs> that just blew my mind. But, yeah, you know, over a hundred years they've had this house in the same family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Um, the other one what we thought was interesting, especially in the way that it used public records and newspaper articles, and I know this is a, a topic near and dear to Terry's heart, was <laughs> what I like to dub the black sheep <laughs> episode about the gentleman who skipped town. <laughs> what did you think about that, Terry, as a uh, forbidden or black sheep ancestor researcher? Well, I love the fact that, you know, we can come in with these stories and say, you know, great grandpa disappeared and nobody in the family knows where he went. And that today we can look and we can say, oh, well, isn't he a slippery little sucker? <laughs> find it, you know? It's, it's, it really isn't a secret anymore. The records are there. I mean, I myself have quite a few black sheep people um, that I have looked into, and they're absolutely fascinating. You know, a lot of people are afraid to look into their black sheep because they don't. you might not want to know, the family might not want to know what you find, but they're the most interesting and they left the most records. So, you know, the newspapers, the court records, amazing finds, and really can add a lot of depth into your person. I highly recommend it. What about you, Jen? <laughs> or did Terry say everything? <laughs> well, she did say a lot of, of what I was thinking. Um, but I particularly found it interesting that, you know, here the, the family that was in New Orleans all this time had thought, you know, oh, he's gone. You know, he, he had left the family. He probably, you know, had died and, and gone on his way. And then as they were looking through all the newspaper clippings, they find a clipping that's in New Orleans that says, oh, by the way, he had died in California. and you know, so this part of the story had not filtered into the family's lore, even though it was there locally in New Orleans. So it's kind of interesting what you can dig up after the fact, um, you know, especially him having, you know, a whole other family and wife and right. all that kind of stuff out in California. Now, I also think that that shows to people who aren't necessarily... Um, who don't do a lot of extensive research or research for other families that once again if you're gonna delve into your family's past you never know what you're gonna find and you kinda have to be prepared that not everybody is as good and as gracious <laughs> and as wonderful of ancestors as we hope they are everybody has some dirty laundry and there are skeletons in those closets so you never know what you're gonna find 
Very true. And I think the important thing to remember is whatever sins that they've committed have no bearing on you. Right. And that, I think, is an important thing to remember, too. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the last one that we thought was very interesting and, and wanted to comment on was the Italian story where yeah. um, the married couple discovered that they have ancestral roots to the same tiny little island. <laughs> um, what did you all think of that? I mean, I personally found it fascinating, and it was like a small world story. Definitely a small world story. I, I was halfway afraid that they were going to find out that, you know, they were far distant cousins or something <laughs> like that, which, you know, who knows, they could have been, but um, but I, w I was, you know, glad to see that, you know, they were able to track down through um, through the birth witness from the, the great-great-grandparents or whatever it was, you know, that they had basically been that close of a family you know that they came over on the same boat <laughs> and all of that. I mean that's just awesome and then for them to actually meet I mean talk about serendipity they definitely was a, a part of their lives long before they were even thought of <laughs> Yeah. and I liked how they uh, showcased and talked about passenger records because I think that's a record set that not a lot of people are comfortable with or really understand how to use but passenger records can hold a lot of vital information. Um, the more recent, well, more recent, no. <laughs> the, the early ship manifest didn't necessarily have a lot of gene ge genealogical information of it, but the ones around the turn of the 20th century, you know, you could find all sorts of things like birthplace, last known address, who are you going to s stay with, um, all sorts of information, and they are a wonderful resource. And a lot of that is because the United States government decided that this is the format that we want the ship passenger list to be in. And they disseminated that so that they could better monitor who was coming into the country and, um, you know, weed out the people who might be ill or that don't have anyone here and, you know, could become you know, a burden on society, hmm. <laughs> you know, like the, the single females were discouraged. If they came, to, came on a ship and they didn't have family that was here or a husband or someone who was going to speak for them, they'd get shipped back. Hmm. Right. So it's, it's interesting. I've been researching a lot about immigration lately and, you know, it's really interesting how, how much the law has has created all these records that are just invaluable as, as you go and, and learn more about when your family came over and everything. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Immigration <laughs> records are awesome. They are. And a lot of people fall into that trap of everybody came through Ellis Island and no. Yeah. I had no one come through Ellis Island. Me either. Philadelphia. Hmm? I don't Philadelphia. Have anybody either. <laughs> Well, and well then a like, lot of mine are like way before Ellis Island, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they came over on ships that don't, I don't even know their names. <laughs> well, ladies, um, our time is almost up this evening, and I want to thank you all for joining us today, uh, and thanks to Terry and uh, Jen for coming and being on the panel this evening. We'd love to hear what you thought of this. Please let us know through our various social media accounts or leave a comment below on this uh, video site. Um, don't forget to check out the In-Depth Genealogist website and our magazine Going In-Depth, which can both be accessed at theindepthgenealogist.com. So thanks for everybody showing up, and we look forward to seeing you next week when we talk about the second episode in this season of Genealogy Roadshow, where they'll be at the St. Louis Central Library. Um, and on that note, I look forward to seeing you all then. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.